So on this video I'm going to show you how to rebuild the GR6S safety lamp. Um, they're not too bad to take apart, they're quite, quite quick and easy. So you can see the model here that we're going to be stripping. Of course it's the type with the magnetic lock which seems to confuse everybody how, how you open that. Obviously it needs a magnet but it doesn't need anything that, that strong. So what I've got here is an Eodinium magnet. I'm keeping it away from everything electronic so that's why I'm on full zoom on the camera. And all I have to do is apply it to the side of the housing. And I heard the click. So that's the pin inside dropping down. So now I should be able to open the catch. Now the catch is open, I'll show you how what's happening here. So I'll try and get into the camera, hopefully it'll zoom in there. I don't know if you can see, there's a pin stuck up just inside there. And as I apply the magnet to the side, you'll hear the click. There you go. And if I move my hand out of the way you might be able to see. Click. That's the pin being drawn down, which will allow the, the mechanism to open. So, now that we've got that open, for some reason everyone on the internet turns these upside down, but there's no need to turn them upside down. Uh, it'll just screw off. Sometimes it can be quite tight, you might have to really get a good grip of it. And that leaves this underneath. So we'll come to change the wick and everything like that in a minute, but I'll, I'll take you through the, the entire stripping process of these things. Um, so if we move back over to the to the bonnet, so of course now there's this extra uh, pin here. So you notice there's pins all the way around on one side next to where the, the gas inlet is. Um, you've got this extra pin. So it might be quite stiff, but that should pull down. You'll see it's sticking down underneath. Normally that can't stick down because of course it would be catching on the flange on there. So that stops you pulling it down. Now that's off, it'll pull down. So what that's done is released it from a series of slots in the bonnet so you can wind that off. To reveal your gauzes and everything like that, so you can see uh, in the bonnet there's the slots that that pin would locate into. You can go into any of them slots. And this is one of the latest type lamps, so we've actually got two gauzes in there. Watch out for the gaskets as well. You'll see there there's a gasket on the inner gauze. Take out your glass, be careful not to drop it, and that will. So that will reveal to you all the, the inside. Um, you can see here how the pin works. So you can see it sticks out one end or sticks out the other. So normally that's in the up position like that. So this pin would engage underneath the bonnet, which stops you screwing the bonnet off. You can't release that until you screw the bottom off, which allow it to drop down. So you can screw the bonnet away. So what we'll do now is take out the flint because this is the got a flint lighter which is into, integral to it. That's what this clip is here that you can pull out. As you can see it's not sparking very well. So we'll disassemble all that. All this out of the way. Right. I'll zoom in a bit further so we can see this. So what I'm going to do is unscrew this knurled knob here. It's difficult to get to see this, isn't it? This knurled knob. And behind will be the spring and the flint, so keep hold of it as you screw it off. Try and show you. I'll drop all the bits out. So I don't know if you can see this on the camera. 
So inside, you, inside you've got a small flint, they're not very big, that's like a bit of green. And you've got the milled knob and a very small spring, so the spring keeps the pressure on the flint, on the flint wheel all the time. Put them down out of the way. Now you can see the, where the camera focuses. There we go. So now you can see the flint wheel, which just free rotates. Once you pull the spring out, you can pull out this little rack, which is what turns the flint wheel. So you can see that the wheel turn in there. So we'll adjust the flint so it sparks a lot easier. Uh, and then change the wick. So this is a bit fiddly. The flint, as you can see, it's worn with a bit of a radius on one end. So I'm going to put that radius back in. The radius will correspond to the teeth on the, the flint wheel. So I've put the flint back in. Put the spring back in. And very carefully putting the thumb wheel back on. So I don't know if you can see in here what I'm, what I'm doing. So there's the thumb wheel back on. I'm just try and this is a bit fiddly. Try and screw it up without everything springing out. So you want to be about halfway, so you can just feel a bit of resistance there. When you pull your your rack out, you should feel quite a lot of resistance to it. But it doesn't want to be really stiff. It should be quite hard to get the rack all the way out. I can't pull that right out of the base. So these don't need to adjust them that often. The spring does keep it in position. But you need to have it fairly well in because it'll foul on the inside of the glass otherwise. So you can see there we're getting a spark every time we're pushing it in. Maybe pour a little bit more on it. So I think that's probably about right. So we look at our glass just to make sure there's no no cracks or anything like that and it's nice and clean on the inside. I'll give it a quick, quick wipe over with a cloth. Just remove any carbon. And drop the glass back in, make sure it's the right way up because it's making its name close to the top, otherwise it'll just irritate. And you can see inside just how close that knurled wheel is to the edge of the glass, so you make sure that that is in far enough that it's not touching the glass itself. And then we'll put our bonnet back together, so these, just make sure they're clean, the gauzes. One goes inside the other and it just fits inside like that. And they just literally sit on the top of the glass like that. This is pushed down into place when we screw the bonnet down. So the bottom of this flange on the bonnet will push down onto the uh, flange in on the gauze which will lock it all together. So it's just the right hand thread like everything else on here. Screw it down. Don't go too tight, just go tight enough so that the the glass is nipped up. So you can see that I can rotate the glass a little bit. So I'll go a little bit more with the bonnet until it's just got it nipped up. So it's it's now tight on its gasket. And then where we saw that extra pin, just push it up and it's engaged in one of the slots underneath the bonnet. So that's the bonnet now locked in place. So now we look at the wick. So I'll drop, drop that. Where the right place to put it? There it is. So we'll pull out the old wick. First of all, we'll see how this works though. So you've got the thumb wheel underneath. 
it's there and all you're doing is winding that tube up and down complete with a wick so you can see the wick and the tube is moving up and down so you'd wonder how that would work but inside of here you can see there's a, another tube which sits over the top of this tube so as you lower all of that down it's actually shrouding the wick which will put the wick out so to pull the wick out I'm going to wind it all the way up to the top pull it out the purple eyes so you can see there's not much wick left in there now you'll notice inside there's actually, I don't know if I can get close enough with this camera there's actually another wick down in the bottom don't pull that second wick out, leave it in because inside here um, this is all full of foam and well, a, a wick type material and that's the end of the wick type material that you can see there it's full of foam because you can tip it upside down nothing's going to leak out it just soaks it all up so I've got a, a fresh wick which I've cut to what's that, an inch long or something like that that would do and I've got the tube wound all the way up to the top so I'm going to get my sharpest end of it and carefully feed it into the tube screwing it in a clockwise direction just so it's going with a weave on the wick and what we need to do is make sure that both wicks, the wick inside and this new wick are touching each other so that the fluid can move from one wick to the other so I'm just going to carefully, being careful not to damage the brass tube just push it down as far as I possibly can it's got to be really tight into the other wick like that so this is too long so we, you need that uh, slightly proud probably about eighth of an inch or something proud of the, the brass tube so with that I shall trim that off so I've trimmed off my wick I'll make sure it's pushed right down again it is quite ragged, but that will soon burn off. It's best if you can get it as, as tidy in there as you possibly can. So the new wick's already been soaking, so it is already soaked in in the paraffin. I'm just going to burn off all of the, uh, the loose bits of the wick, just to make sure that the height's alright. So leave that burn for a second. And just while that's burning I'll show you this other lamp which is very similar. This one here is an old GPO type lamp um, and in here instead of having the winds I just thought I'd show you this while that's burning the wick down a bit. You see the way the wick's adjusted in here you've got a uh, a little scraper that you just move up and down and just drag the wick up in the burner which is a very basic idea but of course this is a much more basic lamp it hasn't got the igniter on it or anything like that it's just a it has got a gauze and everything inside as you can see but um, it's a much more cheaper basic lamp that one. so I think we're just about there with that So blow that out, give it a bit of shape, and yes I know I'm doing that with latex, latex gloves and they're probably going to burn. So that's pretty much it, so now we come to put it back together again. So as you'll notice I've accidentally closed my clamp, so I'll give it the, the magnet treatment. So I need a click. And then the reason why I've burnt it is so that the wick isn't protruding over the edge of that tube because it's 
It's gonna fit through that small hole just there, look, underneath. It goes through nice and neat, so carefully line the two pieces up, screw it down. Make sure that's in the catch. And then flick your, your lock closed, like that. And that should be it. So hopefully we can now strike it up 